What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus package update, daily news, what's going on here in our country and in Washington, D.C., pretty much everything you need to know about on a daily basis, money, investing, the stock markets. Remember that new videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new videos. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you find these videos helpful, don't forget to hit the like button for us down below. The world's richest man, Elon Musk, founder of Tesla, who owns billions of dollars of Tesla stock, founder of SpaceX, and founder of PayPal, taunts Senator Bernie Sanders over the demand for the wealthy to, quote, pay their fair share. Elon Musk started a war of words with Senator Bernie Sanders on Twitter on Sunday after the senator reiterated his stance that the, quote, extremely wealthy must pay their fair share. Elon Musk, currently the world's richest, richest man with a net worth of around $285 billion, according to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index, told Senator Bernie Sanders, I keep forgetting that you're still alive. Wow. He later referenced his recent, his recent sale of Tesla stock, saying, want me to sell more, Bernie? Just say the word. In the last week, Elon Musk sold almost $7 billion in Tesla stock just this week. Uh, Tesla stock actually declined about 15.4% this week, marking the company's worst week performance in, just in, uh, in the last 20 months. But don't feel bad for Tesla stock and EV stocks. Uh, Tesla stock, as you can see here, is actually um, performing wonderfully. Uh, they started off the year at around 729 and is still at 1,033 for the year. So it's still up uh, significantly for the year. The high just recently was at over 1,200. Uh, still over $1,000 per share. Um, so Tesla stock is still doing absolutely phenomenally, as is the stock market in general. The Dow Jones index, uh, stock market index, has crossed over the famous 36,000 mark. The Dow Jones 36,000 was a famous book that was published over 20 years ago, and it was a stock market uh, index number that thought would never be passed. And finally, 20 years later, it was passed. Of course, people thought it would never be passed. Uh, just a year ago, 12 months ago, the Dow Jones was at 29,479 and is now over 36,000, which is a tremendous, tremendous number. That means that the Dow and the S&P 500 are up somewhere around 34, 35% in the last 12 months. That is an absolute <laughs> ton for 12-month return, 34%, 35%. That's a lot. Another thing that's up a lot right now is inflation. A Fed official says that inflation is likely to see higher readings before numbers will start to taper off next year. Minneapolis Fed Chairman Neil Kashari on Sunday said that inflation in the U.S. will likely see, quote, higher readings before numbers taper off as Americans grapple with rising prices nationwide. Quote, the math suggests we're probably going to see somewhat higher readings over the next few months before they likely start to taper off, he said during an appearance on CBS's Face the Nation. He says, quote, the challenge is these high prices that families are paying, those are real. And people are experiencing that pain right now. And so we take that very seriously. But I'm optimistic that it should be temporary, even though it is causing pain right now. Here is Democratic Progressive Leader, a leader of the Democratic Progressive Caucus, Pramila Jayapal, on the House of Representatives coming with this upcoming week on the potential vote on the stimulus package, the American Families Plan, also known as the Build Back Better Plan, and what is going to be transpiring here 
possibly tomorrow and this upcoming week in the House of Representatives. Check this out. All right. So will there be a vote on Build Back Better as promised in that agreement this coming week? I believe there will be, Jonathan. Uh, It's not the CBO score that we're waiting for. The six Democrats that we made a written agreement with and that publicly committed to us and to the president of the United States that they would vote on this bill pending agreement on top lines for the um, for the uh, score or not the score, but the fiscal information that would come from the CBO and the information that was already provided by the White House, that's really all we're waiting for. We're not waiting for a full score. So I do Mm. believe that we will have a vote this week on the Build Back Better Act. It will go to the Senate, and then it will be up to uh, the Senate uh, Democrats and the president who gave us his commitment that he believed that he could get this across the finish line in the form that uh, that the framework was presented. So yes is the short answer. We will have a vote this week. Okay, and I just want to be clear. Yes, we will vote this week means the the we is we in the House, correct? That's correct. Um, The agreement that we made was about passing the bill through the House. And that has been what we've been saying for weeks, um, that we wanted to make sure we passed both bills through the House. The Senate, we are taking the president's word and our Democratic colleagues in the Senate who need to do the work to make sure they've got 50 votes in the Senate Um, to pass the Build Back Better Act, which, of course, Jonathan, if we can just take 30 seconds and say this is truly the transformational bill um, that will bring Americans relief. This is universal child care, universal pre-K, $555 billion of investment into bringing down carbon emissions following our performance at COP26 this this past week. Uh, It is also the biggest investment in housing, $150 billion in housing. Um, and also in healthcare, lowering healthcare costs for all Americans, including by cutting the cost of prescription drugs and uh, capping the cost of, you know, many, many important drugs like insulin, as well as, of course, lifting up immigrants. Uh, these are all the things that are in this transformational Build Back Better Act. So Democratic Representative Pramila Jayapal, leader of the uh, Progressive Democratic Caucus, 96 members in her caucus, says... Um, that they will have a vote this week. So um, that vote could be tomorrow on Monday, possibly. Now, she says that they're not waiting for the full Congressional Budget Office report, which will not be back tomorrow. They won't have the full details back tomorrow. So the question is, will that be enough details for... The moderate Democrats, which were waiting for the full details back from the Congressional Budget Office report. Will that be enough for Joe Manchin in the Senate? Remember, the House would be voting tomorrow and or this week, probably tomorrow. Um, Will the moderate Democrats in the House, will that be enough for them to vote this week? Okay. Yeah, so we're going to have to really see. I really can't give you an answer whether or not those moderate Democrats are going to say this is enough for for us to vote here. Um, Remember, they can only have three defections in the House, any more than that, and they won't be able to vote or it would fail. So what the uh, three Democrats in the House can only say, no, what they're probably going to do is go to them, the moderate Democrats that would likely vote no. And uh, the reason they would vote no is because the full Congressional Budget Office report, this report is basically the math on the bill, on the pay-fors on the bill, how much the bill is going to cost, how much the pay-fors are, the tax raises that are going to fully pay for this bill, and what the report is going to say on the bill. And remember, this report is literally still coming in by the day today and probably tomorrow and um, whether or not these moderate Democrats have enough information, okay, and whether or not they're willing to vote for the bill by tomorrow in the House, okay, and uh, it's it, we're going to find out tomorrow if they're willing to vote for the bill by tomorrow. <laughs> 
I can't tell you this until tomorrow. We're going to find out. Now, remember, they tried to vote on this, when was this, last week when the physical infrastructure package passed. They tried to vote on it for like seven or eight hours on the House floor. And the moderate Democrats said, no, we're just not willing to vote on it until we get more information from the Congressional Budget Office report. We want that report. We're going to find out now that, there's, that we're not going to have that full report back. We're going to have a lot more information from the Congressional Budget Office. But at this point tomorrow, we're not going to have the full report back. So the question is, is what the information we're going to have from the Congressional Budget Office, the math and the details and the pay fors, will it be enough for them to vote on the bill tomorrow? And then we're going to find out everything if they vote on it. We're going to have a whole plethora of information that comes out if they pass the bill tomorrow, okay? If they don't pass the bill tomorrow, we're going to still get a whole lot of information tomorrow um, once this all transpires, okay? The other thing is, is that then it will go to the Senate and then everything is going to really, the, the Senate is really the big wild card here because of Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema. Dun, dun, dun. You know their theme song, right? Uh, and even like Mitch McConnell has said that, um, you know, he's putting a, a Republican kind of uh, spin on it, saying Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema are going to write the bill. They're not actually writing the bill, but they're going to dictate uh, because if Joe Manchin doesn't vote for the bill, Kirsten Cinema doesn't vote for the bill, the bill can't pass. But on the other hand, we have kind of Bernie Sanders going to be combating. They're saying um, fighting for things to be in the bill. And this is where the Senate is going to really have a huge battle. And a lot of people are saying, and even Joe Manchin has kind of said that what the House passes might really not even matter. Might not really not even matter because it might just be somewhat of a loose framework because the Senate is probably going to significantly change it. Yeah. So. It's almost, uh, I don't want to say inconsequential of what the House passes, but in a way, it kind of is, per se, if you kind of know where I'm going here, because it's really going to depend on what the Senate passes, uh, because it, it, it very well could be very different, very different on what the Senate passes. It also is going to depend on Joe Manchin and what he actually comes out and says and does. Is he going to vote for the package? What is he willing to vote for the package? What is Bernie Sanders going to be willing to vote for the package when Joe Manchin gets done with it? Is Bernie Sanders going to be willing to vote for the package? What is Bernie Sanders going to negotiate in with the package? If Joe Manchin reduces the package, what is Bernie Sanders going to demand is added into the package as well? And remember that we have um, multiple different advocacy groups pushing for a $1,400 stimulus check to be put in there for adults and senior citizens, as you can see from this headline here, uh, just from a few days ago here, $1,400 fourth stimulus check, why the Senior Citizens League is pushing for it. As senior citizens struggle to make ends meet as prices increase rapidly, the Senior Citizens League is calling on Congress to send a $1,400 fourth stimulus check. We have multiple different advocacy groups pushing to add a $1,400 to $2,000 stimulus check in their for adults. This would be in addition to the monthly checks that are included in there for the child, for the children, 65 million children called the child tax credits. Those are currently included in there to be extended for one more year, 250 to $300. The child tax credits um, are currently included to be in there for one more year. Joe Manchin actually wanted to change that significantly. He wanted to put an income requirements on there um, that would be $60,000 of an income threshold for a working family for two people so that if he would have got his way, which right now they're, they're writing it without his demands or requirements, that would have meant a mom and a dad, as an example, a, a family would have meant they both people could make no more than $30,000 each, $60,000 for two people, so that if they made more than $30,000 each. They wouldn't get those checks, those monthly checks called the child tax credits that they want to extend for one more year. Also, um, a job requirement 
this would have been Joe Manchin's demands, which you never know because this could get demanded by Joe Manchin once it goes back to the Senate. Um, the job requirement would have meant that both, um, as an example, a mother and a father would both have to work if Joe Manchin demands that once it goes back to the Senate. So if that happens, again, this could all be part of the negotiations. Those checks go out to 65 million children. A recent study said that 47% of the money that gets spent on the child tax credits literally go to spending on food for the children. So literally about half of the money gets spent on food for the children. I'm sure another large percentage of that money goes towards uh, rent or shelter for the children, clothing for the children. So uh, you could literally, in a say, in a way, Joe Manchin wants to take food out of the mouths of millions of children. In fact, here was a recent headline from uh, CNBC that Joe Manson's child tax credit changes could prevent more than 37 million children from getting aid. Directly here from CNBC. So that would pre could, could prevent, if he gets his way, 37 million children uh, from getting aid. I wouldn't want to be the person to do that. Uh, again, I also think that seniors and adults, low income, middle income, uh, should get a check as well in this package. There's also a petition for a $2,000 monthly check to be included in this package that has been signed by almost 3 million signatures on change.org. Um, so almost 3 million people have signed this petition from change.org to include a $2,000 monthly stimulus check into this package. Almost 3 million people have signed this. It's a lot of people. So again, I think a lot of people really need help in this uh, package. And I mean, we're in a once in a hundred year pandemic. They have passed three stimulus checks. They do have these monthly checks going out to children. But of course, we know that a lot of people are still really struggling during this pandemic. And, uh, it's still going on. I mean, we still have a lot of cases and a lot of people dying still uh, to this day. So um, I really hope that as much help gets done with this package and the next stimulus package after this, that President Biden has already confirmed there will be another package after this. And there's a lot of other state stimulus checks, county stimulus checks, and um, state cities and county stimulus checks that are going out right now. I just did a video with three of them that are going out right now, as well as I did a video with nine different state stimulus checks and county programs as well, as well as the utility program LIHEAP that are paying utility programs and gas programs. I'll link you to that video as well. I literally had dozens of people saying that they have um, already gotten that as well. A lot of people said they got anywhere from $500 to like $1,500 in gas, electric, and utility programs paid for uh, recently. I'll, I'll link you to that video here as well. So I will keep up to date with all these different type of programs as well as stimulus programs and the voting on this next stimulus package. Remember, there's going to be another stimulus package after this as well as daily news and what's going on here uh, in our country. I'll keep up to date with everything. So make sure to subscribe down below. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's completely free to subscribe. Join our family. We're almost at 400,000 subscribers. Uh, pretty amazing to even think about that. So join our extended family. It's free to do so. I'll link you to some of these videos here. This top video is about the lie heap utility and energy program that you can apply for if you're low income. Uh, that's free to do so as well. This bottom video is how to get rental assistance where you can apply for rent assistance and get up to 12 months of your rent paid. And this video is about nine different stimulus check video or stimulus checks and stimulus programs going out right now as well. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks guys and I will see you in the next video.